to record this. So we're jumping to two, question two, part B. Now, since this is a calculator problem, <clears throat> we can solve it. We can use a graphing calculator and, and figure out where this value is. And it's going to be a decimal, decimal value, I think. So um, let me go ahead and log in with my third device here. My third device. Sorry. Um, because remember, my third device has my graphing calculator on it. So if you guys have your graphing calculator right now, can you guys go ahead and type this equation into your graphing calculator if you haven't done so already? Um, let me log into Zoom on my third device. So it's all this like technical stuff where I have to keep jumping back and forth between these devices. To my third device, we'll have it me here and you. Okay, so I can show. The answer is uh, something like negative 1.8. Right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on the calculator right now. I'm gonna go ahead and share my device. Share screen. Okay, so you guys can, oh yeah, oops. Okay, so I'm gonna go y is equal to, I'm gonna graph this because I can do this on my graphing calculator. And now you can use a solver, you can solve it, but this is one way also. I'm gonna write negative uh, parentheses t or x plus one because we can only use x here. Oh my gosh, what happened? X plus one, close parentheses, sine, close parentheses of x squared divided by two, close. Uh, I don't know why, oops, we did it twice. Okay, let me double check that to make sure it's right. Okay, so the concept here, let's go over the concept. For all, find all times t in the open interval where the particle changes direction. Mr. So, Co, we're not seeing any screen. Oh, so don't it, it, it unshared itself. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Oh, I know I clicked. Ignore the Burger King app. Okay, so I plugged it in. I'm gonna graph it. Now, the problem is this graph looks quite terrible. Uh, they gave us a certain time frame. So if you want, you can adjust your graph if you have time. And I can say the window, and I can change this between x is minimum of zero and x is min maximum of three. See, I can do that, but I'm gonna actually give it four. Usually I like giving a little bit of extra space. Let me give negative 0.5, just so I have a little bit of buffer here. Let's go ahead and graph it again. And we can see when this graph changes direction. Okay, so one, two, three, you guys can see three right there. Um, so I'm gonna draw the graph over here. Am I right? And then I'll, I'll get back to the other one. Okay. Now on this, I want to find out what the zero is. So I, you could try moving the arrow there, but that is not accurate at all. Remember, we do have a calc button on top, second calc, and we're going to go ahead and find the zero. We can left bound, you're going to pick a point on the left, pick a point on the right, and then make a guess. I'm just reading the directions on the bottom. You can see the word guess. And we can see 2.5, okay, 2.506, 2.507. So here's the thing about the AP exam. They will take truncation or they will take round off. Both of them are okay. So if you write 2.506 or if you write 2.507 because you round it up, both of those are totally acceptable. Okay, let's go ahead and share back the screen now. Let's take over. Okay. So what happens is we realize this point here is 2.506. Now our rule is that you're, you change directions when you change signs. We are all negative here and we're positive here. So the only time we actually change directions is at this point here. 
we are not changing directions here. We start off going backwards. That's not changing directions. That's just going in a direction. But we go, we'll go backwards to forwards. That is where we change directions. What about this point here? This was out of bounds. We stopped counting at three. Okay. So why do we change directions? Because our sign changed from a positive, or in this case, from a negative positive. We went left. We stopped at a 2.56, and then the sign changed to a positive. Is that okay for part B? Now let's take a look at part D. Andrew, tell me if that's not enough, okay? During the time window between zero and three, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin? Uh, show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so the issue is looking here, um, what is the greatest distance? So how do we get distance from a velocity equation? Okay, how do we get distance from the velocity equation? The way we get distance is we take the integral, right? Now, let me ask you what happens here. Looking at the graph that we drew here, you would you guys agree I'm going left, 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 right? So I'm actually headed in this direction by a lot. And then when I turn around and I come back, with this area here, does it look like it's bigger than this area on the left? So one thing is that we're asked how, what's the greatest distance away? Well, I've been walking away for the longest time. Here, I start walking back. As I walk back, I'm not getting farther, I'm actually getting closer. Unless if this is some huge graph like that, we would have walked past it going the other way. Now this would be the greatest distance. But looking at the picture, you can see that I've been gaining value initially going to the left of my starting point. So we have to find out what is the area of that curve, which is the integral between zero and 2.506 of V of T. Because when we take the integral of velocity, that gives us the distance traveled. And you can do this on your calculator. Since you already have, let's go back to the calculator and just see how fast this problem could be. It's more of a constant problem, but let me go ahead and share my calculator screen again. Since we already have this as y1, if you remember, we could write the uh, integral very quickly, math nine, gets us to the integral between zero and 2.506, right? So make sure you do write it as a work. If you don't write this at work, the calculator, the, the reader will be like, hey, how'd you get that number? Okay. And then we have uh, vars, y vars, function y1. And that automatically types it for us to so save time. We, this is, we wrote it in the version of fx. Answer is 3.5. Three point two six. That's the distance. You can put negative. It actually doesn't matter if you put positive or negative. Okay, so they'll take it as that. That's the distance away from the our origin. Um, Mr. Ko. Yes. Can you show the y like the actual like y would equal to? Right here. It was in the in the problem. It was negative parentheses x plus one, close parentheses sine of x squared over two. And you can oh, I see what, all right. Yeah, thank you. I accidentally put minus one. Yeah, so mm, right. it's a calculator problem. It's like, dang it. Yeah. But definitely that uh, if you write it right, that uh, Y bars makes it so much easier to just plug it in. So you would save time knowing how to use your calculator. And then uh, the second part of the question is show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, yeah, that was the work, I think. Um, wait, let me think. Oh, wait, so we also have an issue. Um, okay, so here is the next part, that at t is equal to zero, our x position was already one. So from t is equal to zero, here's our origin, let's say, okay? 
we were already over here. This was our start at one. And then we went left of that origin point. So negative 3.26 minus one is, sorry, plus one here is negative uh, 2.26. So that's my position to the left. And if you want to use the word left, or you can write negative 2.26 or um, 2.26 left of the origin. Okay, left of the origin. Shree, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Can I ask you what, what part did you get stuck on? Was it that last two point answer or? Um, I think it was just kind of like the concept of um, like that, using that point. That was, um, so um, are you okay with, with the, our saying that we were going negative velocity all the way to two point, uh, the 2.506? Yeah, it makes sense when I look okay. at the graph now, yeah. Yeah, the graph is super helpful. And I think the key word here is again, distance, and how do we get distance from velocity is that integral part. And if you had just gotten that integral correct, that would have given you one point. And if you remembered we started off at x is equal to one, that gives you your second point. That's how you get all points here. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people forgot that second, uh, forgot that we started at x equals to one. Okay, thank you. Let's see, let's do all the three now. Let's jump to three. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Sorry, I'm jumping between so many different um, devices. And Apple is giving me like a three second delay before I can switch screens. Okay, so the next question is, a car is traveling on a straight road with a velocity of 55 feet per second at t is equal to zero. Okay, so they're already blowing through it. 55 feet per second seems kind of fast, right? That's like five floors per second. Okay, um, between zero and 18 seconds, the car accelerates at some AT in feet per second squared. Is a piecewise function defined by the graph above. Great, so on the right, they tell us that is not the position, that is not the velocity, that's actually how fast, that's acceleration of the car. Okay, so looking at this graph, I want you guys to just understand what we're, we're talking about right now, what's going on with this graph. I'm going to throw in some points here. This is six. Uh, this is two. On my screen, it, it says you're sharing screen, but it's, but it's like not, right? Screen. You're right. Okay, let me let me go ahead and try not doing it again. Okay, let me try again. Let me retake it over. You're right. I can see it from my phone, but then it wasn't, I guess it's not sharing for everyone. Let me try one more time. Thank you for telling me. Let's see, it works now. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm just copying uh, from the, the worksheet on the left here. Just copying the graph with just some points so you guys can see so I can write on it, okay? And this is 18, just to say this is 14, okay? These are some points on the graph. This is 10, right here, 10. Okay, not the, it's not the scale, okay? All right. So I want you guys to think about what acceleration means. Acceleration means I'm changing my velocity. When you step on the gas pedal, you accelerate up. If you step on the brake, you accelerate, you, you decelerate. But what if I wasn't pressing on anything? Your velocity should stay constant, at least in an EV. If you don't press anything on an EV, your car actually doesn't slow down at all. But on a regular car, you actually slow down a little bit. So ignore that. So whatever velocity, so I have some V, Initial V of zero is equal to 55 feet per second. That's so I'm already driving on the freeway, whatever it is. Okay. Now, if my acceleration is positive here, am I going to be increasing my velocity or decreasing my velocity? Think about it. If I'm stepping on the acceleration from 55, am I, is my speed going up or down? It is going, my velocity is going to go up, it's going to start increasing. So I'm going to, so my velocity graph is from 55, it's going to start shooting up. And it starts to slow down here. I start to ease off of the gas pedal, right? I start to ease off here. And I actually stop for a moment. I stop increasing. And then I start applying my brakes. I start to decelerate, decelerate, decelerate. Am I decelerating here? Yes, I, I'm still decelerating. I'm just decelerating at a constant rate now. From here, 
I ease off on the brake, but I am still decelerating. I am still decelerating. I'm just not decelerating as much. At 15, I start accelerating again. Okay. So that's a concept you guys want to make sure you, you, you like catch, but just in general, okay? So I am still increasing my, my velocity. I stop increasing. I start to decrease my velocity. I am still decreasing velocity, right? I'm decreasing at whatever this rate is, at negative 15 on the, on the graph. I'm still decreasing. I'm still slowing down, just not as much. And now I stop decreasing and I start increasing now. Okay, so you guys wanna understand how to read this because this is the change of the velocity graph. Okay, and once you can understand that idea, um, it helps you understand like, like this idea of kinematics, right? Physics and stuff moving around. Okay, is the velocity of the car increasing at t is equal to two? Here's t is equal to two. So is my velocity increasing? Well, remember when I say increasing or decreasing, that's a calculus word. And if something is increasing, the derivative is positive. So is V prime at two, is that positive? Yes, it is positive, right? Because the derivative of velocity is acceleration, acceleration at t is equal to two, that is a positive number, okay? So if it is increasing, um, so that's positive. So yes, velocity is increasing. Does anyone need to me to clarify 3a? Naman, are you okay with this 3, 3a part? Uh, yeah, I'm good with this. Okay, uh, good. Um, hopefully, um, me explaining it makes a lot of sense. Like, I'm using the calculus words here. Rate, increase, decrease, that's all the velocity. So that's all the derivative. So the derivative of velocity is acceleration, and they give me that acceleration. Okay, at what time t in the interval between zero and 18 does, other than t is equal to zero, the velocity of the car uh, is 55 uh, feet per second, okay? So at what point am I going to be back at 55 feet per second? Now, since this is kind of cool, you can actually look at this and you can say, well, this is how much I've grown. If I take the integral of acceleration, that's gonna give me some velocity of increase. So I would have increased velocity, but then don't we decrease velocity here with my deceleration? So at what point here would these two balance out? At what point here would these two balance out? So if you look at the graph, I'm looking at something like um, one, two spaces past the curve. So I'm looking at this is gonna be 12. If you look at the graph, it's like two phases, this is like two spaces and this is like two spaces. So we're, that's when we balance out, okay? So you can write this in a couple of different ways. You could say uh, the integral between zero and six of A of T is equal to the integral between six and 12 of A of T, right? Or, or the negative version of it, right? Okay. Or you can say this equals to zero, integral between zero and six of A of T uh, is equal to uh, minus um, or plus the integral between zero and 12 of A of T, that equals to zero, because that's, they would put cancel each other out. And the reason why they give it to you specifically in these easy trapezoids, so that you can do this without a calculator, this is a non-calculator question. They're not asking you to actually find the integral here, but they want you to understand conceptually, does that make sense? Okay, so you get one point, for just finding that it's t is equal to 12 and then somehow just describing to them why it's true. Okay. You would just say it's equidistant. You can say, I mean, like you can also write this. If I, here's another way of writing, which is just the sum of this one. Hey, I added it and it's become zero. Between uh, this is the B, Mr. Ko. This is this is the B part. Yes, this is, this is the B part. The but doesn't it ask for uh, zero to eighteen? Yeah, zero to all the way to eighteen. So you have all this to play with. Mm -hmm. So if we start at fifty-five right here, fifty-five velocity, and don't mm -hmm. we start increasing, 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 increase? 
Yes. But then I decrease, 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 decrease. When do I decrease to where exactly the same spot when we started? And if you look at the area, this 12. shape and this shape are exactly the same. So we stop at 12. Mm -hmm. right. So if I add, remember um, the area underneath the curve is I'm adding that change. I'm subtracting this negative change. So we balance back out to 55. Yeah, so we ignore the rest of the correct, graph. correct. The one through eighteen was the whole play field, but they asked you when between zero and eighteen. When between zero and eighteen, did you go back to fifty-five? And sometimes read that question again. At what value? At what time in the interval between zero and eighteen, other than zero, is the velocity of the car fifty-five seconds feet per second? Okay. This is the same idea of making money. If I made all this money and then I lost all this money, I'm still back to where we started. But of course, he's going to keep breaking, so he's actually going to keep decelerating. And that area underneath the curve is our cumulative change, our changing of our differences. Anyone else need me to rephrase this for B? Okay, please don't be don't be shy. All right, don't be shy. Um, okay, on the time interval between zero and 18, what is the car's absolute maximum velocity um, in feet per second? And what time does that occur? Okay, what's the absolute, absolute maximum velocity? So, so this could happen at a couple places. Remember, we're looking for the, you could think of it as fastest speed. Speed is the wrong word, but that's how we think about velocity. Velocity is how, what's the fastest point? Now. I want you guys to think about at what point do you think it's going to be the maximum? So looking at this graph, I'm going to add a bunch. I'm going to subtract a bunch and I'm going to add a little bit. Look at the picture and see if that kind of makes sense. I'm adding a bunch. I'm subtracting more and I'm adding a little bit back. Do you think this little is going to be enough to nullify my difference? Probably not. So when do you think I'm going to be at the fastest state here, the fastest state, is right here, right at the beginning. After I kick on the gas a bunch, I'm gonna be going super fast now, right? So that's my that's a uh, absolute maximum means what is the most um, most maximum? Now, how do we find this in calculus? We could have done the derivative, right? If we took the derivative of our acceleration, we can see that oh, that's all positive and negative, and we have a zero here. We have a zero change, and that's our critical point. So it turns out this is we're going up to down, right? So we have a positive change. Okay, but let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this. What is the absolute? Okay, car's absolute. Uh, what is the car's absolute maximum velocity? So we're going to add up all this velocity here. We're going to add up this whole velocity in this area. So that's a trapezoid. So we're gonna say, we started off, so the velocity would be, we're starting at 55, right? And we're gonna add the change from zero to six of our A of T, DT, okay? And since this is a trapezoid, we can use the equation of a trapezoid. If not, you can do a, a rectangle and a, you can do a rectangle and a triangle if you want, it's up to you. But they give us all our numbers. So the trapezoid here is, I'm going to say plus uh, one half height, which is 15. And then I want to say um, two plus six. And that's it. I just walk away from that. Done. If you want to actually do the math, eight times eight plus uh, two plus six is eight, half eight is four. Four times 15 is 60, 55 plus 60. Make sure you do show all the work. Don't be like me right now, is 115, okay? But please, you could have left it here and walked away and went home. The points that you would have received for this, this is a four point problem. If you looked at the rubric, if you got T is six, if you wrote T is six, because that's when you stopped increasing acceleration. 
Okay, stop increasing, uh, adding velocity to it. You got one point. If you're able to find the absolute maximum velocity, this one or this one, you would have received another point. You would have to identify six and 18 as candidates you know, or indicate that V increases. Oh, there's a, there's a reasoning component. Okay, if they ask you, uh, justify your answer, why not at 18, right? Why not at 18? Is because 18 was the area. Remember we talked about the area for 18 was so much less. This was less than um, this possible. So that's why 18 is not. So remember when we also, there's a way of checking absolute maximum. We actually have to compare all our values. So the velocity at time six is less than the velocity of time uh, 18. Right, we we have to compare all our um, all our possibilities. You remember if the graph looks like that. How do you know? How do you know that this point here was absolute maximum? We had to compare all these three points. So when you hear absolute maximum, you then have to make sure you cover all the possibilities. So we said it could only be at six. And it could only be at 18. Right? These were only two points that we thought. And definitely the velocity at 18 was less. OK. All right. Let's see. All right. Um, can I get any follow-up to question number three? Are we okay with question number three? Are we confused about the way they wrote the answer or what we needed to answer that correctly, like fully? Haruka, are we, are we okay to move on? Seems okay. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one then. Now, a couple of things that you've noticed is that the keywords are super important here. Like when they say absolute, increasing, decreasing, all that stuff plays a part in these stupid questions. So it's almost like a vocabulary test. Okay, and that's do part D, okay. In what intervals between zero and 18, if any, does a car's velocity equal to zero? Justify your answer. So do you think this car ever actually stops? Okay. Now, again, looking at, at this um, problem, like, does it ever really stop? And the answer is, I don't think so, right? Because if we look at this, so we said from here to here, we're back to 55. Now, would this deceleration add up to 55? I don't know. So let's go ahead and, and figure that out. We said from here to here, that's 115. Would this be um, 100? Would that be 115 or not? So let's go ahead and find the area between 6 and um, 16. That's 6 and 16. So the integral between 6 and 16 is all that negative. That's the negative part of the, the trapezoid. So that's my deceleration. And if that is greater than 115, we're good. But for us, this was just one half uh, height, which was negative 15. And then the base of these were trapezoids were 10. And what is that? From four, 10 and four. And what I'm doing, I'm just subtracting the numbers. Real quick. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm doing here. I said, one half, this is my height, that's 15, see that's 15. This part here, that's four. 10 to 14 is four. 10 to 16 is 10. And those are the numbers where I got those numbers from. And if we do the math, we can see that is uh, 14 divided by two is seven. Seven times 15 is 70 plus 35 is 105. So is 105 gonna cancel out 115? That's not going to become zero anytime soon. That's going to stay positive, right? So this car never goes to zero. Okay. 
Uh, I'm a bit confused. Why did we need to do the, all of this and why it's zero to 16? Okay, so there's actually a, a couple, uh, it's, it's six to 16, it's six to 16. Oh. Okay, so there's actually two. You could have done it two ways, okay? Let me illustrate the two ways real quick. And both of them are perfectly fine. So if I say, st stop here, okay? How fast is my car driving at six seconds? We said it's gonna be 115 from our previous answer. We could say V of six is equal to 115. Okay. If you want from part B, I think it was part B, we could have said at V of 12, that is 55. Okay. Now, is there enough here to stop my car, this deceleration? So we had we did it two different ways. Our first way we said, let me erase everything here. We said, if this is 115, is this enough to be negative 115? Answer was no, we did the area. This was actually negative 105, not enough to stop my car. I would have fallen off the cliff. If you want instead, you could have done, let me use a different color. You could said here, this is uh, V is equal to 55. Would this here be negative 55? And it wouldn't have been, right? So there's actually, there's more than one way. The answer key shows both ways. The idea is that this is still greater than zero. We have not stopped the car. If this was less than zero, we stopped the car earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, thanks. So the thing about the AP test, well, good thing is that it's flexible enough that if you don't do it one way, they have an answer key for the other way too. And that's a, the way you did it is totally off the board. There's a supervisor on the AP exam that will then look at it to see if they can still give you credit for it or for what parts that you still got right. Okay. Um, okay. So that's it. Does anyone need help with D, I, I, I found so number four. I feel like number four is like one of the easier ones. Okay, because we, we literally just did that section.